Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a parametric six panel door, which means that it changes size in a logical way. It can be saved to the home builder library, selected from the right click prompt interface and easily added to your design. This file was sent to me from someone in the community. They were having issues trying to create this door. So I thought it would be a good example for a tutorial. I'll be trying to do these on a regular basis. So if you have any assets you'd like to learn how to make, feel free to let me know. If you haven't joined the Discord channel, I'll be putting a link in the description of this video, but there is a good group of users who are asking and answering good questions. This is the main way I'm doing support and helping people out. So if you have any questions, feel free to join the server and say hi. One last thing, I have an introductory course to creating these types of assets, and it's important to watch that first if you are just now learning how to create parametric assemblies. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at how to create this type of an asset. So this is the file that I got from the user here, and this is almost set up perfect. But you'll notice that if I select the X dimension object and change the size here, we have this center style, but you'll notice that it's offset from the midpoint. And so as we change the size, it's not behaving the way that we want. And so I'm going to go ahead and create this or make this mesh parametric again, but I'm going to go ahead and do it from scratch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first apply all of the modifiers. So here, if I go to the properties interface, go to the modifiers tab here, I'm just going to hit X on all of these modifiers. And now the mesh is going to go back to its original size and it's just a static mesh at this point. And so with it selected, I'm going to type control C to copy this and we'll minimize that. And here I have a new instance of Blender open. And what I'm going to do is with the home builder library active, we'll go to the library interface. And then here in the assets tab, since this is an entry door panel, I'm going to make sure I select this category here and then we'll go to the commands and we'll create a new asset. And so that's going to create the assembly for us that we're going to use as the starting point. And so with that done, I'm going to go ahead and type control V and that's going to paste our mesh in there. Let's go to solid mode really quick. And so now that we have our mesh in here, we need to parent it to the assembly that we created. And so here, if we open up the outliner here, we can see that this is the mesh object and here is the assembly with its structure set up. So I'm just going to drag this, hold down shift and parent it to that base point. And now that we have that done, we're going to move the dimension of the assembly to match our mesh. And so here we'll go ahead and select these handles and I'm just going to snap and actually with vertex snapping on, I'm going to go and snap it to the top point here. I'm going to take the X dimension, snap it to the width of the door, and then we'll take this Y dimension here and we'll snap it to the back of that door. And so now here, if we open up our sidebar with the N key, here we have our dimensions of our assembly exactly the way that we want them to where it fits the mesh perfectly. Now with that done, I'm going to go ahead and create the midpoint object that's going to move this center style here. So if we go to the objects, I'm going to go ahead and add in a new object. This will be an empty object. And here this will be the mid X. And so we'll click OK. And then here, if we go ahead and select that mid X object, I'm going to change the size to be a bit smaller. We'll just make that one inch for now. And then we want to set a driver on the X location to always evaluate to the mid X point of this assembly. So I'm just going to right click, select add driver, get out of this interface. So now that we have the driver assigned and this object selected, we'll go to the logic panel and here for the expression, let's go ahead and add in a variable And here. We just need the X dimension of our assembly. And so we'll copy this, we'll paste it in there and we're just going to divide it by two. And so now that mid X object is always going to be in the center of the assembly along the X axis. And so with that done, we have all of our empties in place. So now we can start hooking all of the empty objects to the mesh. And so if we go back to our objects panel, here, we'll collapse that panel. And then here, this is our mesh object. So I'm going to drop this down. We'll go to the data tab and we're going to enter edit mode. Now, since this was already created in another assembly, a lot of these vertices are already assigned to these hooks. And so you'll notice all of these numbers here are how many vertices are assigned to these objects. 
And so I'm just going to go and clear all of that information out here. If we just click refresh vertex groups, that's just going to recreate all of the vertex groups that we need to use and then make sure that nothing's assigned to them. So we want to see that all of these values are zero. And with that done, now we can start assigning the hooks. Um, I'm going to go and do this in wireframe mode, also with vertex select on. And so the first thing is we're going to go ahead and grab all of these vertices on the right here, basically the vertices that we want to have move along with the X dimension object. And we're going to assign these to X2. Since this is a entry panel door, it needs to have a or it needs to allow the ability to have a positive X value and a negative X value. And so that's why we're using this X2 object here. And if you're ever not sure which one to assign it to here, if we exit edit mode really quick, so we can see we have these X1 and X2 objects already assigned. And if we click on the X2, we can see that this one is the positive X value. And here, this X1 is on the left side, which is used to determine the placement for the vertices on the left side of this door. And so with that done, let's go ahead and enter edit mode on this. And so with those vertices selected, that's gonna be X2. Here, these vertices on the left are gonna be X1. Now for the Z dimension object, basically when we change the height of this door panel, obviously we have these six panels that are in this door. We need to determine which one of these panels is going to change in size. Now I could create three empties and have it allowed to change the height for each of these, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make it to where this center panel is the only one that changes size. So I'm just gonna select all of these vertices and assign those to the Z dimension object. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and assign these center vertices here. So if I just grab all of these vertices in the center, that's going to be the mid object that we created. And so that's the mid X object. So we'll assign those. And then for the depth of the door or for the Y dimension, here I'm gonna go into a top view. And here I'm just gonna select all of these vertices right here. So I'm just gonna go and select those first. And then I'm gonna hold down shift just to continue to add to my selection. And then we'll grab these. So I'm just selecting half of the door, just like you can see there. And those are going to be assigned to the Y dimension object. And now we have all of the vertices assigned to the correct groups. And so with that done, we can click connect hooks. And here, if we change the size now, we can see that that center style stays in the center of the door, just like we would expect. And then also if we shrink this to be the opposite swing, you can see that everything works just the way that you would expect. And then here we switch this over. And then if we change the Z dimension object, we can see that it changed the height of the door, but it's also just adjusting the center panel height when it's changing size. And obviously there will be some issues to where if we make a door that's too small, we will get kind of strange results. But this is one of those things to where you won't have a door that's going to be that small. And if you do, it would just be a standard slab door or a different style. And so there will be limitations on the size, but that works out perfect for this case. So that's everything we need to do to make it parametric. There are a few more options. And so here, if we go to the material tab, we can see that there's already materials assigned to this door panel. And what I wanna do is I wanna make this work with the material pointer interface. And so here, if we go into the materials interface, we have this pointer for the entry door panels, which is typically just this painted wood white. And I'm just gonna make it to where the entire mesh is assigned to this pointer so I can easily just change the material for this pointer and that will update all of the doors in my scene. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select on this. Here, I'm gonna remove one of the material slots that's added. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we can access the material pointers by clicking this button. And so now we can give it a pointer name. And all we want to do is just make sure that that pointer name is assigned exactly to this. So entry door panels. Okay, so we've assigned that. And if we want to verify that it works, we can just click update materials and perfect. We can see that it now has assigned the painted wood white to this material slot. Now I don't want this material saved with this. It's going to automatically assign the material when I drop in these assets from my library here. And so I'm just going to go and switch to the properties interface and go to the materials and then just delete out the material. 
That way it keeps the material slot that we have, but it just removes the material that's assigned. And then one final thing that we need to do is we need to set up the hide prompt. And so when we turn this on, we want it to hide this door panel. And so what we're going to do is here in the objects panel in the main tab, we're going to add a driver to this disable and viewports option. So we'll click add driver or right click on the property, click add driver. And then here in the logic panel, we're going to go ahead and access the variables for this assembly. And we just want the hide prompt. So with that selected, we click OK. And here I don't need this additional variable that Blender creates. So I'll delete that. And then I'm just going to copy this, paste it into my expression. And so now when I click this button, it hides that door. And the only thing that I need to do is I want it to disable in the viewports, but I also want it to disable when I create a rendering. And so here, if I just copy that driver and paste it onto this property, now they'll share the same exact formula. And so now we're ready to save this to our library. I'm going to give it a better name here. So we'll just call this six panel door. And then when we go to the home builder interface, interface, go to the assets here, I'm just going to go ahead and save it to my entry door panel uh, library in the deco category. You can create your own categories if you want to by just accessing them through your file browser and just creating folders just like you would, but we'll just save it here for now. And so I'll just click save current asset to library. It tells me the asset that I'm saving is the six panel door that we just created and we'll click OK. And it may take a minute for it to save it to our library. But when it's done, we'll see here we have the six panel door saved. It's generated the thumbnail for that, and now it's ready to be used in our designs. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope it helped you out. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I'll be releasing more videos similar to this soon, so subscribe to this channel for future updates, and I'll see you in the next one.